Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. Today we're taking a look at gauge planes and auto set planes. They look kind of similar, but they're very different. Let's take a look. This is a gauge plane. Now I'll talk about the history here in a little bit, but a gauge plane is made by Stanley. It just looks a little bit different. Everything down below is kind of the same, except for the kind of funky shape on the sidewall. But this whole thing looks weird and the iron doesn't come up as far. What's up with that? On top of the Stanley gauge plane, Sargent also made one, but they called it the Auto Set. And there were several other companies that made similar things, and they have similar functions, but each one of them went about a different way. Let's set the scene. It's the mid-1800s, and wooden planes are what people use. However, some people have been going more and more towards metal body planes and transitional planes that take a little bit of both of them. There is a lot of innovation going into the world of woodworking and there are lots of patents being filed for. Between 1840 and 1900, there were thousands and thousands of patents filed for woodworking tools, particularly hand planes, because there were so many new things going about it. It wasn't just an iron, a wedge, and a body anymore. People wanted more fangled knobs and switches and dials, and there are a hundred different ways to do it. The most famous of these was the Bailey pattern, and that kind of revolutionized how woodworking happened. Now, a lot of people didn't want to give up their wooden planes, so they started making transitionals that gave you the benefit of the burnishing of the wood with all the functionality of the metal. And then eventually people were like, well, I don't want to mess with the wood anymore, and they slowly transitioned over to all metal planes. Around about the same time, there was a fellow who thought, you know, this is kind of cool, but the problem is every time I put the iron back in here, I have to adjust the lateral, I have to adjust the depth, I have to make all of those fine adjustments and I have to reset the plane every time I sharpen it. And if I want to sharpen it quite often, that's annoying. So he set about making a plane that would automatically set itself. When you put it back in, it was in the exact same place. And there's really no way to make that perfect every time, but you can generally get it a lot closer than you can with a Stanley Bailey. And he introduced the gauge plane. Now, I don't have one of the original ones here. They would have been transitional, but they had the same mechanism that you find in the Stanley gauge planes. And they slowly became something that people actually wanted, and there was a market for it. Enter a guy named Stanley. Stanley had an interesting business model. They didn't just make innovative tools. They actually collected the people who made innovative tools. So Bailey, Stanley said, you know, if you come work for us and with us, We'll let you innovate and have your own shop where you can make things and try and make new tools. And if we like them, then we'll sell them. And if we don't, then you can make something different. And it was kind of an awesome opportunity. And Stanley did this with a lot of different companies. It often meant that they had these sub companies that would then be fighting inside the Stanley company. And that's why Bailey eventually left Stanley because, uh, well, it ran into some infighting. Gage was one of these companies that Stanley brought in. And initially they were making the transitionals, but Stanley really wanted an all metal body. That's what most of the planes were going to. So eventually they introduced the Stanley Gage plane series. They came in all the original sizes. Here I have a four and a five. The early ones would just have a five, but later on they came a G5 or a G4. For all intents and purposes, they were the exact same size and form factor as their Bailey pattern style, the style that Stanley really became well known for. They just had this weird doohickey. The iron doesn't come quite up as far, and let's take this apart and take a look at what makes it work. The odd item is that the chip breaker is not connected to the iron. The chip breaker is connected to the lever cap, and the lever cap is bolted straight onto the chip breaker. And this makes it nice because now the chip breaker is dedicated to the plane, not the iron. So when I put it back in, the chip breaker is is always at the same spot every time I lock it back in. So I know my chip breaker is an exact distance away from my mouth. It makes it kind of nice. I, I, I like that setup. Number two, when you pull out the iron, you have this weird doohickey that's attached on here. And it has this slot that then fits into that T-bolt. And that gives you your depth adjustment. As that T-bolt moves up and down, the iron moves up and down in the slot. The one thing you'll notice is there is no lateral adjustment on here. And that's the one thing on this that this becomes very, very accurate at resetting. Once the clamp is locked onto this and you put it back in, it will have the exact same lateral adjustment that it had last time. So as long as you're sharpening square, when you put this back in, you won't have to adjust the lateral adjustment. It will be there exactly every time. It's nice that you don't have to put in the lateral adjustment. But there's two slight problems with that. Number one, the first time you put this clamp on here, it is very fiddly and you have to move it back and forth and adjust it and move it and adjust it and move it and put it back and forth. And then it finally gets in and then it's set. It's nice. It, then it's auto set. So it takes a lot of work up front. The other big problem is that 
if you're hand sharpening, getting it perfectly square is rather difficult. And so if you're not absolutely perfectly square, or if it starts to slightly drift over time, the next time you put it in, its lateral adjustment is gonna be out. And, and that, that gets really annoying. Later, they did actually make a weird rolling doohickey that would lock into this so that you could sharpen it with a guide on here. And so it was already set up to hold a guide in there. Though not many of them were sold, they're hard to come by. And I've only seen one of them. Um, though I don't know if that would work very well to keep it laterally adjusted. The other thing you're gonna run into is every time you sharpen it, the iron gets a little shorter. So that means you're going to have to adjust the depth adjustment. So, uh, you know, if you're really, really good at sharpening it perfectly square every time, this does save time initially. But eventually, it takes a lot of time because you have to readjust it. One of the things people would do to save time is rather than putting it in, checking it, loosening it, moving it, putting it in, checking it, loosening it, moving it, putting it back in, what they could do is just, uh, let's just put this in, and then I'm going to grab a plane adjustment mallet and tap it back and forth. And that works fairly well, other than the fact you're putting all of your pressure onto this depth adjustment screw. And you'll see some of them where that depth adjustment screw is broken off because someone did a little too much lateral adjusting with a mallet. So enough talking, let's actually see this in use. I'm gonna take this back, and this one's pretty dull. It needs a sharpening, but it's taking about the right shaving I want for this. So the settings are all right on this. I just need the iron sharper. So I'm gonna show you this in real time to show you does it actually save any actual time. Let's set it on here, loosen it up, take out the iron, and then let's take it onto the course. Check it. Good edge. A little more. Good edge. Medium. There we go. Fine. There we go. Remove the burr. And then onto the strop. It's a little harder to do the back with that item on there, but I think that will about do it. So let's put it in here and see what we get. Slide it in, attach it down, put in the chip breaker, tighten it down, and let's see what shaving we get. That's actually a little deeper than I would want it. <sighs> but lateral looks about good. The problem is, there's actually a little bit of slop up and down in the iron. So if I loosen this up, and I pull the iron back just a little bit, and then retighten it, now I should get about the right shaving I want. It's a little better. It's still a little on the thick side, so I'm gonna have to adjust it a little more. Let's back it up. One more. Oh, now it's a little too light. There we go. Now I'm getting the shavings I want. So, yeah, I didn't have to do any lateral adjustment on there, but in all honesty, I still had to do some adjustment. I didn't have to do any lateral adjustment. That's good. The problem is, what is it saving me not doing the lateral adjustment? It's saving this. Oh my, that was really difficult. So, mm, is it worth it? Most people said no because Stanley Bailey's still sold way, way more than the gauge planes. And nowadays, these are kind of collectible, but they still are about the same price to a little bit less than the Stanley Bailey, even though there are far less of them. The thing about it is, it's a really tempting idea. If you have a plane that is auto set, it goes in and you don't have to worry about it, that, that could sell a lot. And so a couple other companies came in and said, well, uh, let me try it and see if I can make it work. This one is the Sargent Auto Set. Uh, and it has a lot of the same features, but slightly different. This one, you need a screwdriver to take this nut off. And once that loosens up, then I can take off the chip breaker lever cap. And in this case, the chip breaker and level cap are all one big item, except for this piece on here, which allows you to evenly set the depth of the chip breaker. And I really like this function because I can micro adjust exactly where my chip breaker is with this knob here. So I can get it really, really close or I can back it up and let it off. I, I like that function. Then inside, 
you have just an iron. There is no extra doohickey on here. So that makes this a lot easier to sharpen. I can do the back very easily. I can sharpen the edge. This is relatively nice. I like that. And then Sargent said, ooh, well, we can do it even better. We're going to put a lateral adjuster on here. And it's a fairly stiff lateral adjuster, so it holds right about where you want it. So theoretically, as long as you're nice with it, you'll get it right back into the same spot. So you'll have a nice tight fit in here. But there's a little bit of slop on this one, so it's not going to be exactly where it needs to be. But other than that, these two function pretty much the exact same in how easily they are to adjust and maneuver around, other than the addition of the lateral adjuster. There are a couple other problems with these that people have complained about over the years. Number one, on the gauge plane, the frog is attached with a rivet that goes all the way through the body and one screw here. You can't move this frog back and forth. You cannot adjust the mouth other than to file it wide or open. This is locked and set in place. Now this one at least is fairly solid side to side, but you can't move the frog at all. On the sergeant, it's much the same, except with the sergeant, it's actually sitting on a heavier body. It still has two screws that go in there and you can't move the frog at all. Where the frog is, is where the frog is. The mouth can't change. It's one of those things where it's so close. It, 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 an auto set would be really, really cool if you could put it in and it was set up where it should be every time. Those would sell like hotcakes, but they missed just, just by that much. And that much means that they're not as useful as a standard Stanley Bailey, and then that, that, that's kind of annoying. So, do I like these as users? They work perfectly fine as users. These will produce shavings that are amazing, and they have slight, certain benefits. Uh, if you really hate that lateral adjuster and you hate using it, then the gauge plane may be the plane to go for you. If you really like adjusting your chip breaker, then having the uh, Sargent Auto Set, that could really be useful. On balance with everything taken into consideration, I, I still would reach for a Stanley Bailey every time. Many other companies have tried to do it as well, and the most recent is Veritas with their custom plane. And I have to say, it's the one thing that I really don't like about this. This is my all-time favorite plane. If I buy one plane to be a user, this would be my favorite. It is amazing. It has so many bells and whistles and functionalities and simplicities, but the auto set function on this is what I find annoying. This is the iron and chip breaker for the Veritas custom plane. And it's got this weird dial back on here. So when you take the chip breaker off, theoretically, it's going to go back into that same hole in that same spot. Now you still have to do a little bit of lateral movement, but that's where you can put the screw in. I lost my original screw, so I've got this one in here. But uh, yeah, they have a tendency to move away. And I find this to just be slightly annoying. Uh, I'd just rather have one screw to lock this together and not have to worry about setting that in. Because if I sharpen this iron a few times, I'm going to need to move this back. And to move this back, I need to then take this off and move it. And i got to fiddle with it back and forth and back and forth. And I found this to just be far more work than it's worth. It's the one thing that really annoys me about this whole plane. The one thing Veritas did get right is they have these little set screws on the side that actually pinch the iron. So when you put it back in, it goes in and touches those two set screws. So the iron can't move once you have it laterally adjusted. And that's really cool. I can set it in there and it, it functions. That one works, but the rest of that is just kind of, mm. And that, I think that's kind of the story of all auto set and gauge planes is that, they, they really, really, really try to solve the problem of I've got to set my settings every time I put it back in, but they all fall short. And I think they work towards it, they get close to it, but with that promise of auto set, you just feel let down every time you use it. So if you see an auto set or a gauge plane in a store, should you pick it up and use it? Well, yeah, they make actually really good users. Just don't believe that they're auto set. You're going to have to do some adjustment every time you put it back in there. It's always going to take a little bit of work, but sometimes not quite as much as the Bailey. And that, that can be useful. So if you like those bonuses, then that might be something worth looking for. And they really aren't that much more expensive than the Bailey, except for some of the, the weird sizes that are really rare, then those might be a little more collectible. I think in the end, it's kind of a treatise towards buying tools of any type. Trust, but verify. Just because the ad says it will do something doesn't mean it will. So take it with a grain of salt. I know I could talk a lot more about these. There are other things that set them apart, other little features and cool items that happen. On top of that, there are other companies that tried this and also kind of fell short of that mark. 
some of them got a little closer, some of them didn't, and it's one of those things where it's just, it's so frustrating because if someone could hit that and someone could actually make it auto set, whoo that could be a nice tool. But until that day, we've got Stanley Bailey's. So <laughs> I hope you like this. If you have any questions or thoughts, things I forgot to mention, let me know those down in the comments down below. I do read through all of them. And sometimes I learn some really cool things from that. So thank you for expanding my horizons and helping out with that. On top of that, if you do hit comment, or you hit the like, the share, subscribe, even if you put just comment down below, thank you. That helps out the channel. It helps us grow. It helps us get in front of more people. It's just a great thing. So thank you for that. That means more than I can say. If you want to take it one step farther, there are a whole bunch of names over here. Those are all of the patrons on Patreon. Without patrons or members here on the channel, people who click that little join button, we wouldn't be here. We are sponsored by you, the viewer. So if you like that and you'd like to keep us going and help out that way, think about becoming a patron on Patreon or a member here on the channel. We have special perks for both and things to say thank you. So I think that'll do it for now. And until next time, have a wonderful day. I was watching a movie the other night and it really made me want to name this Nicholas. The movie was The Rock and this would then be Nicholas Gage. Ooh, that's not what I want. Not what I want at all.